Welcome to the Simply Incredible Podcast. I am Daryl, a.k.a. The D, and here is T. Rizzo Troy Chapney. I'm so glad to be here, my brother. Thank you for having me again. And tonight is going to be like totally awesome, like tubular or something. Radical, dude. Whatever. We are talking 80s movies. Might throw some TV shows up in there, like The Great Alf. <laughs> dude. I love it. <laughs> I have got, I, I've been listening to the podcast um, recently mm-hmm. and noticing that if you listen to the podcast um, and wanted to do a drinking game, you could do it by listening. Every time Troy said the word, dude, take a drink. There was another thing you do too. What else do I do? Because you have not watched How I Met Your Mother. Right. Okay. They're, they made a drinking game out of, uh, what's her name? I can't think of the, the chick that was on there. She was in and Allison. Uh, no, she was on, on in the um, Avengers movies. All right. uh, oh, Co- Kobe. Yeah, Kobe. Smothers? But but on she played a, a TV person, and she would say "but um." You say "but um" a lot. Oh, but um. um. I thought you were like "but um." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't remember doing yeah, that. Yeah, but um. I'll have to take and watch myself closer. <laughs> and, and she she uh, got everybody towed down because she found out about it and just repeatedly did it. We got to <laughs> take another one. But, um, no. <laughs> yeah, I did. And I was like, Troy, stop using the word dude. It is not a comma. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> For me, any kind of a pause, I put it in and I was like, yeah, that's about as annoying as anything. <laughs> it's all fun, though. I, I'm trying. I'll do better. But, um. But um, I might not. <laughs> but I'm an um. So anything exciting going on? Uh, you know what? A uh, lot of good energy at the edge mm-hmm. lately. Everybody has just mm-hmm. been training hard, getting ready for the you know um, end of the year stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, they still got they still got a couple weeks, mm-hmm. you know, of training yeah. before we take and test them. But yep. um, but uh, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he's now conscious of it. I should not have done it. Yet yeah, now I'm gonna be. I have to find a new filler. Hey now. You know what? It seems so natural. I got ready to say it again just now. I had to be like, don't say that. There's a <laughs> man. This is why we need video because you can see Troy. He's just struggling in his brain right now. I, that is like the beginning of all sentences for me. Yes. I will have to do this. But um, what I was thinking, <laughs> you guys can't see, but visually I moved the microphone away. That's awesome. What about you? What do you got going on? Really nothing. Just, you know, holidays are coming up. Just lots of family and all that good fun stuff. Do so, you have um, anything that you are going to Christmas shop for yourself that you haven't bought yet? Well, it depends on deals. Oh, okay. And, and uh, if I find good deals, they will be on videos on, on YouTube. How much of it is local buying and how much of it is online? Well, most of it would be like Amazon because they will throw some serious deals down from Thanksgiving to Christmas. Really? Mm-hmm. I actually did buy one thing for me. Um, it should be arriving any day now. All right. And it is, you know what, I'll go ahead and let the cat out of the bag. It's a Harley Quinn statue where she's on a motorcycle and she's throwing a bomb. How big is it? It's... Uh, Man, I, th- I think she's probably about six inches. Wow! And it's real heavy too. Um, it basically retails for about three fifty. And how much did you get it for? One forty eight. Wow! I was like, I don't want to spend that much money, but I got to. When you're on Amazon, what do you use for a search? Harley Quinn or statues? Or what? I, um, depends on like the, the day. Is. Most of the time, it's um, statues. Okay. Um, if I'm looking for anything in particular, you know, then I'll go for that item. Like, um, so a lot of times I'll just uh, look in like Batman statues because you put Batman statues, it will, it will kind of filter Joker, Harley, all oh, the other characters, you. X-Men, you know, it'll put in, you know, all your characters in it too. Do you ever use eBay anymore? I do the, do that some. I stopped, man, because it became, you know, these, the kind of people who use it as a business. Yeah. And I liked it when it originally came mm-hmm. out and it was more like a yard sale. Yep. And I don't like the idea that guys are out there like, making it. Like, like how far back are you going? Like, cause oh, I remember man. we started using Mid-90s? it. Nineties. Yeah, I think we started using it about ninety six, ninety seven. Okay, is when we started using it um, with our baseball card business. Do you still do that now? We don't sell very much on there anymore. Do you sell period anywhere? I mean, do you still just just once in a blue moon we'll put something on. That's about it. 
And was that good money for you? At the time, yeah. yeah. Early early in the 90s because we were really early on it. And then the market yeah, kind of and then, saturated. And then it became, um, it used to be with baseball cars, Beanie Babies as well. Yeah. Um, it used to be if you wanted stuff, you had to go to your local shop. Mm. And now the world is your local shop now. What Couple of keystrokes, you got anything. Instead of Beanie Babies, what's the big thing right now? Um, I'd say right now, still the pop vinyls, but you know, that's one of those things that that bubble could burst at any time. It could last a long time as well because they, they, they're really getting a lot of different licenses. Are you still actively like, you know, expanding that or have you slowed down? Or what I've slowed down vinyls? a little bit, because, really because they're coming out with too many. Yeah. I mean, I know one coming out, uh, John Wick is coming out oh. and we know that movie's coming out soon. That that trailer looked incredible. Mm -hmm. I'm, I love it. Josh Peasy, mm -hmm. um, he posted a little picture or one of the previews, and he said, mm -hmm. "Best action hero since John McClane." I could not agree more. Yeah, I love Keanu Reeves. Yeah. That. Mm. that that's a one that as soon as I saw it, I was like, "Okay, that's an instant classic." Mm -hmm. I'm gonna watch that a lot. Yeah. And at the same time, I watched Denzel, The Equalizer. Did you like that one? I still have not seen that yet. I know you and uh, I know you've told me, like, I can't remember if Peasy said much about that because I know you said a lot I love about that it. movie. And I know a couple other people said a lot of really great things. I've yeah. got to see that. Now, pop vinyls, I like I said, man, more power to you. I don't ever give anybody grief about whatever they collect because mm -hmm. I know whatever I want to collect. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of sideway glances at what I'm, you know. Yeah. I've actually stopped collecting anything as much as I used to mm -hmm. because I was just like, man, like all the comics that I have, I have thousands and thousands of comic books and so many of them that I haven't read and never will read. Yeah. And I'm like, it just, I don't know. It just kind of seemed like only the ones that really, you know, get me. Yeah. It's funny. I'm kind of getting in that spot right now. Yeah. Because every week there's so many that comes out. There's so many awesome ones. Especially with DC, they're putting their rebirth. You know, that rebirth is out. And every two weeks, there's a new issue. Uh, like Batman, every two weeks. Right. You know, Superman, every two weeks. Harley, every two weeks. All these things, every two weeks. It's like, I've gotten behind on comics. Because there's too many. How is the rebirth um, storylines going? Are, are I like them? them. I like them a lot. Um, now, again, having said that, uh, some of them I'm behind on. Right. Because again, it's so many. There's two. Um, now I will say this: Batman is a roller coaster. You've got uh, a few good issues, and then it'll kind of, kind of dip down a little bit. Yeah. Then it'll come back up. It's a roller coaster to it. So. I have to really, really be intrigued by the premise mm -hmm. to take and buy it um, now, because I'm. So, it's so much more rewarding to me to find mm -hmm. out from other people. Something that gets graded really high. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. The consensus for most people is this. Mm -hmm. There's still stuff, I mean, I want to buy on my own. But mm -hmm. it's a safer bet. And most of the time, I think, man, nine out of ten times, I agree with those yeah. you know, things. I'm like, yeah, that's good. Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough. I mean, but one one thing they are doing a lot now is story arcs. You know, like a, like a five, six issue arc. Then, and then they start and then, another story. Yeah. And that, to me, is, is good. You know, th this story might not be good. You know, just wait to, uh, for really three weeks and then you got a new art coming. Yeah, which I think is the way to do it. Back mm -hmm. in the 80s when I was really collecting, late 70s and 80s is like my heyday when I was collecting. Mm -hmm. um, and if they were um, really somebody that I was normal with, uh, they could go forever with a nonstop storyline, like a soap opera, mm -hmm. not story arcs. Yeah. Like Fantastic Four, I mean, you could have like really fifty comics mm -hmm. where there was no end. Yeah, and that did kind of get to me. I remember I was thinking, I was like, dude, this is never. There's never a fulfilling climax. Yeah, you know? so I was like, nah, I'm not gonna do this. Yeah, and the biggest thing with that for me is, you know, if something happens, you miss a couple of issues. Like I've missed something now. Yeah. So you, then you got to read like the next like five issues to kind of go, okay, I can fill in some of those spots. And we're also in a position where it's easy to get a hold of now because mm -hmm. you get the internet. You could yeah. take and, you know, go buy it online yeah. easy. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, if you missed one, yep. good luck if you yeah. didn't have a comic shop that mm -hmm. was local. And even then it was 50-50. Yeah, yeah cause, I mean, we had, gosh, when we were young, um, here in Lynchburg, I want to say like three or four shops. 
Yeah. Here in Lynchburg at the time. In the seventies, I mean, there wasn't really a yeah. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Seventies. Yeah, I'm talking about this is actually early nineties. I'm yeah. kind of really starting. Is that with, Danny Grigsby's place on mm-hmm. um, Ward or uh, Fort Avenue? Was it Heroes? Mm-hmm. Something like that, where the heroes hang out. Or yeah. Something? And then you had um, well, James, James Layer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that that was a pig style over there, but. I'm telling you, I had to stop going in there yeah. because of that. Do you ever go in there anymore? I can't go in there anymore. I, I, people know I've had a kidney transplant, oh. and I'm sincerely worried that it's so dirty in there that I, I can't go. I don't understand the mentality. I don't that. either. And, and they're nicest people. Yeah, really nicest. good people. And uh, my brother went in there the other day because uh, we have a convenience store, and when he gets um, like uh, packing stuff, like popcorn and bubble wrap and stuff, he'll take it to him because he knows they do a lot of eBay stuff. And he said he has never seen anybody in there buying stuff. They they um, buy a lot of stuff and I guess sell it on eBay. I guess I and a lot of stuff. Do, yeah, and a lot of stuff. Because last time I was in there, they had comic books, you know, in long boxes, and then they had a bunch of stuff on top of them. So if you wanted to get in a long box, you couldn't even get into it. Oh yeah, I went into their new place after the other one burnt down, and mm-hmm. that place burnt down. It's terrible to say, but I went in there one time. And the fire chief was in there, mm-hmm. you know, saying, look, you do something or this place, it's a tinderbox. You're, yeah. It's going to be gone. Lo and behold, I think it was within a year that place was burned yeah. to the ground. Yeah. I wanted to buy that building and, and, and have that for the edge. Yeah. And well, I asked it, them about it. And they were like, no, nah, we're not going to. Because they owned it. Yeah. They, they, they owned that whole thing. And they, I don't know if you knew this, they had a, a trailer beside it. Not like a trailer you live in, but like on a tractor trailer. Yeah, I, I do remember that. Yeah, and he told me that was full of stuff too. And that burnt. Uh, you know, I don't know if that actually burnt or the heat got it so much that it damaged everything in it. Oh, I wouldn't doubt it. I was like, man. Because no. I, I used to go in there and there's no telling what you could find. Like action figures and stuff, comic books. I'm sure there were comic books in there worth a ton of money that were just in random boxes laying around. Not only that, they weren't bagged and boarded no. and they were just all There's no disheveled. order. No. Oh, man. Couldn't do it. But it was it was really fun going there because like, this is who knows what you'll find in there. When I was younger, it was like a treasure hunt. Yeah. When I got older, I was like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right. That's what it is. <laughs> I, hey, I tell you what, that's a pretty good segue into it's a not actually. It's really but, not. Uh, no. To what we wanted to talk tonight. Why don't you tell everybody what we want to talk about tonight? We're going to talk about the 80s movies, um, pop culture. Yeah, pop culture. There's some TV. Sure. You know, who knows in there? We might even crack out the electric boogaloo. Who knows? <laughs> and what actually um, made me think about this is I saw that. Uh, a new kickboxer will be coming out soon. So I was like, Jean Claude Van Damme. I was like, you know, that's when he started the Van Damage back in the in the eighties. Is that going to be um, in theaters? I don't know if it's in theaters or if it's going straight to DVD because a lot of his movies lately have been going straight to DVD. Okay. I know uh, Dave Bautista is going to be playing uh, Tong Po. Really? Uh-huh. Uh huh. George St Pierre is going to be in it. Oh, I did hear about that. Yeah. And, yeah. For some reason, when I first heard he was you know cast in it mm-hmm. i thought he was the lead i think there's gonna be a few more um yeah you know what i thought gsp was gonna be the lead too yeah uh, i'm not really sure who's gonna be the lead i i, I don't know okay uh, i think there's probably some more uh, ufc guys in it as well i'll take and check it out i mean mm-hmm. they did have like five kickboxer movies already that yeah. i knew of they, they could have more but i, they, they, I, I think there probably is more yeah. i know uh sasha mitchell's in a few of them yeah burton richardson i trained with him a couple times mm-hmm. he was in one he's the, one of the best martial artists and nicest mm-hmm. is that the guy uh we trained with in richmond yeah one time yeah yeah awesome right? yeah Good yeah person. i remember i bought a shirt from him i was like man it's awesome i love this and he, he was cool as can be and one thing cool about training that day is i remember there was a, a guy there in a wheelchair yeah. and he was doing like knife fighting and stuff i was like this is awesome. Yep, I know that guy. His name is Clay, and mm-hmm. he is uh, a black belt. He's been in the area in martial arts since I started back in the mid '80s. Mm-hmm. Really good guy. Yeah. And um, Dennis, um, one of his guys trained under him, Tim Tim Rumsfeld. Really, I know Rumsfeld. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, trained, and I remember asking because I didn't understand how that would work. Mm-hmm. I said, "All right, how does it work if he's your teacher if he can't do anything?" He goes, "Well, how do you teach somebody?" You sit there and tell him, say, all right, put your left foot here. Mm-hmm. All right, put your weight on your toes. Yep. All right, now pivot. He, he taught me like that. And he he said he was a great teacher. Mm-hmm. 
I was like, fantastic. Isn't yeah, because cool? I remember seeing him, my, and I know this sounds bad. I was like, what's this guy supposed to do? And then you see him in there training, and so like, this is awesome. Oh, and, he, and, and, and you know, it's like, you know what? I've had problems, but you know what? I'm inspired. No kidding. Make man. you push that much harder. You got, dude. Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff says where where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. I, I don't know about you, but growing up in the '80s, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Yeah. I loved growing the up. 80s in the '80s were phenomenal. When I was a kid in the '70s, uh, really young. One of my favorite shows was Happy Days. Mm -hmm. And I remember secretly kind of wishing that I was in the 50s because mm -hmm. it seemed like yeah. such a cool place. Yeah, the greasers. Yeah, man, the stuff. Fonds, uh -huh. you know, Everything was really kind of a neat place. Until when? Well, until the 80s hit. Until and they then, jumped the shark. Until they jumped the shark. <laughs> now, and I'll tell you another thing that made me think about this. I haven't said is, but, um, it. You're right. I haven't. But um, what I was thinking ah, of. You know. <laughs> ah, you know. That's all But, um. I did that that time. I did not do it on purpose. <laughs> I know you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't the second time. First time I did. I was watching uh, Goldberg's, and it made me think that is our happy days. Yeah, it is. And it's like, wow, we are getting old. Because I remember the Wonder Years for the people in the '60s. Right. It's like we now have our show for the '80s. Oh, jeez. Like, oh my goodness. But the '80s was so cool. Because we had so many things starting to come to us, mm -hmm. entertainment-wise, because yep. technology started. Don't you remember how everything in the 80s, the look was ultra-modern? Yeah. And looking back on it now, it, it looks really cheesy. Yes, it does. You, know. um, you remember uh, MTV started. MTV. And that really changed music. Oh, yeah. It went from really listening to music to now I see the music. Yeah would still probably be an incredibly viable you know channel mm -hmm. it's become a reality yeah. show channel i haven't watched mtv and oh. i don't know how long i can't even tell you i know it's been a long long time i think i stopped watching I, it was spring break i was in um where was it was it daytona and mtv was down there mm -hmm. and that was a big deal back then and Polly Shore was real big. Yep. The weasel. The weasel. And that guy was the biggest jerk in the world. He yeah. he was too cool for anybody. He wouldn't let anybody get near him. And all the other, you know, stars that were down there seemed to be really cool. But he just stood out as like Downtown Julie Brown, wobble wobble wobble. No, wobble wobble wobble. <laughs> I don't always loved watching her. And I was like, I don't know what wobble 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 means, but it's awesome. That's her little catchphrase. Yeah. But I, I remember the that was the first time I ever got into music was MTV. Mm -hmm. yep. I mean, as a kid, I mean, I guess music was no, I, big, I, but it we, wasn't We all were always meaningful. around music. It just wasn't meaningful mm -hmm. like it was when I started getting to that age, like mm -hmm. junior high. Mm -hmm. Then I was like, yeah, yeah I okay, mean, I, get it. I grew up and you know, my mom and her friends listened to disco music and stuff. Oh, yeah. That, and yeah. I, I remember Disco Duck. I remember that. Yeah, and um, Saturday Night Live. Not not live Saturday Night Fever, Fever. Bee Gees? Uh, yeah the Bee Gees we were huge Bee Gees fans Sha Na Na I remember Sha Na Na we saw them live in concert oh no kidding yeah in Roanoke it was so funny I never got into them because... kids look up Sha Na Na and just be embarrassed for me yeah <laughs> it, it didn't come across like a doo wop group to me it just came across like a comedy show where a bunch of guys had a chorus yeah you know yeah and I was like oh, that's not greaser music yeah. But yeah. do, 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 do. And I was like, night, sweetheart. And that's the only stuff I yeah, kind of dug. That's all I remember of the song. <laughs> um, now, the 80s, you started out with, oh, man, what's the first, like, really music you remember from the 80s? The first stuff I remember was, like, um, Billy Idol. Mm hmm With you the know? Rebel Yell and White Wedding. And um, I remember the first time I saw Michael Dancing Jackson. With myself. I love that song. What was that? Dance With Myself? Dance yeah. Dance With mm -hmm. Myself. Men Without Hats, mm -hmm. the Safety Dance, I remember yep. them. I just heard that uh, the other day. No, actually today, I was driving and I was like, I'm singing right along with it. Oh, dude, it's so funny how mm -hmm. music will stick with you. Yeah. I, mean, I haven't heard any of those songs for years. Mm -hmm. If it came on, I mean, I wouldn't skip a beat. I tell you the, Half the, the words would be wrong, the, the but video, they'd be the same wrong words I sang back then. <laughs> yep. That, you know, we got, so at some point we got to do a podcast of, <laughs> of music that we thought we knew the lyrics to. Yeah. It's like, I did not know that was the lyrics. I've been singing the wrong ones for years. Do you remember uh, Take On Me? Oh, gosh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
incredible video. That that to me was like this mind blowing video, half sketch, um, and then yeah, and half then, live then, action. And live action. I was like, this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. I love and I love that song. Mm -hmm. You know that group, uh, they still perform. Really? Yeah. Um, I saw something about them i cannot remember what it was like they were being inducted into some hall of fame or something mm -hmm. that came up that lead singer looks like he hasn't aged a day wow he i mean he's got to be in his late 50s well let's say because that was probably early 80s yeah it was and early, he was probably in his early 20s yeah. at that time so yeah 30 years later yeah they actually performed that song live and sounded as good as they did but i was like man because his voice it's awesome you know let me ask you this um metallica is coming out with another cd soon yeah um, and they've basically been consistently new stuff, you know, making new albums really since the early 80s. Okay. Uh, yeah, early 80s. I was thinking late 70s, but no, early 80s. Do you think you would like a band? Because as much as I love Metallica, their music is not what it used to be. Oh, right. Now, do you think you, you like a band that does that or a band that goes away for 20 years and comes back and does like a reunion tour totally depends on the band because mm -hmm. then like Def Leppard and stuff like that are doing tours now yep and I was um, like that's cool the biggest thing is when they have lineup changes that you mm -hmm. hate one of my favorite bands in fact if I had to be held to it my favorite band I fell in love with in the 80s and it was Van Halen. Oh, love me some Van Halen. Van Halen. Now, mm -hmm. 1984 came out, yep. and I love that whole... Oh, my gosh. That think of was those one of the best albums ever. Dude, and think of the videos. Remember Hot Jump. for Teacher? Yeah, Hot for Teacher. Jump. Jump. I mean, come on. All of Panama. Uh, Panama. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Is that the one that had... Um, Remember he was held that, by his that, leg, and he was like, you know, yeah. kind of swinging around the stage? Yeah, and uh, what was, was it um, the... Uh, not the bass player... Michael Anthony? Yeah. I remember he, yeah, he's swinging across the stage in the video. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. got like the Jack Daniels guitar yeah. and stuff. I was like, oh my gosh, this is great. Now, the first time that I ever got into Van Halen, a, a buddy of mine, Shannon, mm -hmm. had invited me over and he had a VHS tape uh -huh. of Van Halen live without a net. Yep. I never, you know, wasn't into um, them before. And we watched that thing and it it was the coolest energy mm -hmm. I'd ever felt. And 5150 was the album. Yep. And every song on that album is like one of my favorite songs mm -hmm. of all time. Even the ones that were only on there, you would never hear radio play like they weren't released. Yep. Man, absolutely love that. But I hate to say this because I almost feel like I need to take and jump backwards. Van Halen, as great as they were, it wasn't my kind of music at the beginning of the 80s. Mm -hmm. My stuff was... Really, I, I got into breakdancing. Mm -hmm, yep. So I wanted to, to breakdance so bad and know about that culture so much mm -hmm. that that's what I listened to, like Run DMC. Mm -hmm. I love me some. I love some DMC. Oh, man. Big Daddy Kane, remember him? Big Daddy Kane, mm -hmm. Grandmaster Flash. Uh -huh. Oh, the by the way, on uh, Netflix, I don't know if you know this. There's a, a TV sh uh, like a show breaking down eras of um oh, hip-hop no kidding yeah i just watched the first one uh grandmaster flash was on there and stuff like that and it's a few other people I was like this is awesome dude i'm telling you all of that stuff you I really learn uh, all the way from the early time how they learned how to do scratching and stuff like that like this is awesome they must have talked about like one of the biggest influences back then was africa bamada mm -hmm. yeah i think it was the soul sonic force mm -hmm. and back then it was so different and it was cool because mm -hmm. it was different yeah it's like, all right, what is this scratching the record? What is that? Mm -hmm. These guys are rapping. I remember uh, here in Rapper's Delight, the Sugar Hill yeah. Gang. Mm -hmm. And it was a funny story, which made it catchy. And then it had a catchy tune. And, I mean, it blew up. It was like, wow. Now, most kids know that from an Adam Sandler movie. Oh, really? The Wedding Singer. Gotcha. With, with the, the old lady was singing that hip, at, at a wedding. Ha, the hip did a hip. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, wow, that's awesome. Um. Ice T. Mm hmm. We I think we did we talk about those movies. Uh, yeah, we yeah yeah about we talking about uh, Crush Groove. Yeah, and Beach Street. Uh, Beach Street. Breaking. Oh, love me some Breaking. Breaking Two. Electric Boogaloo. I do. And just like you, we were out trying to do these moves. We couldn't do them. We oh, we no. tried. We thought we could. Dude, <laughs> I did it again. Take a drink, dude. <laughs> All right, but uh, I did better. <laughs>
Dad got it. <laughs> Man, you got. You this is gonna be great. Stifled. <laughs> Stifle it. For those who don't know, all in the family. I loved all of that stuff so much, mm -hmm. but my buddy hated it. He was into Def Leppard, and mm -hmm. back then, I think at the same time, he was trying to pull me to the dark side uh -huh. of rock and roll, was um, uh, into Def Leppard. It was Pyromania mm -hmm. or High and Dry, one of those. Yeah. And uh, I remember Pyromania when that came out. That was huge. It was huge. And the first song I heard from that mm -hmm. was uh, Photograph. Yep. And when I heard that, I was like, okay, there is something to this. Yeah. Because at first, I thought it was just noise I didn't because I didn't listen to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and he brought me over, and and I remember him having his Walkman. Mm -hmm. He was one of those kids. Yeah, I, I had my Walkman, and I had my little cassette in there. And... Yep, but he he uh, wanted to be a headbanger. His mm -hmm. parents were really really strict, <laughs> so he had kind of a mullet, you know. But it had. To be I don't know. I don't collar. know what a mullet is. I had mine in through the uh, early two thousands. Dude, that's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> but like when he would go out, he would flick his hair out of his collar. Yeah. And if he was around his parents, he tried to tuck it in his collar and try to wear it. I mean, he was like disguising it and not being around them much so he could grow his mullet out. <laughs> That's awesome. But his parents were the kind that were just so involved in his life that like they would iron his blue jeans oh. for him. Uh -huh. So they had a crease. Who does that? I never did that. No, no, no. no normal headbangers do that either. No. But he would Acid sometimes. wash. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, I love me some acid wash. Mm -hmm. He would have um, a jean jacket or oh, a yeah. members only. Members jacket. only. Oh. Yes. If you didn't have members only, you were a loser. You were a you had I was one. a loser. You never had one. <laughs> I had one late. Did you I, have I was, like a ripoff or the real members? Only? I, I had the real one, but it, it was it was late to the party. Oh, dude, that's. That yeah. sucks when you're coming in on the tail end. So, like, yeah, I got my. Oh, that's not popular. Nobody's anymore. wearing Darn that. it. No wonder I got it. <laughs> yeah, right. No wonder it went on sale. <laughs> I used to love my blue jean jacket, though. Mm -hmm. To me, I love that as much as, you know, I love my leather jacket now. I love Boy, that. Now you got the, the Fonzie uh, Indiana Jones jacket. Yeah, yeah, I love that one. <laughs> but my buddy, he. I had a buddy who um, had one, and he let me only wear it a, a few times. It had been washed so much that it had like one of those vintage Levi jean looks, like a lighter you yeah. know, thing. It didn't look like mm -hmm. the Wranglers that could stand in the corner by themselves. Yeah. And he had taken, and the collar was ripped off and frayed just a little bit. Not not something that looked professionally done. It looked real, like it had mm -hmm. gotten ripped off. And he had had an artist draw this picture on the back of it with a Sharpie mm -hmm. of like a little guy smoking a cigarette like Van Halen baby, you know, yeah. On, yeah. on the 1984 album, something like that. Look that up, kids. It was the coolest coat. I remember wearing that and I got like, you know, for a week I wore it and I had so many people go, man, that is cool. Man, that is so cool. And I'm, I hated giving that back. <laughs> I was like, dang, it, please, I'll buy it. Do you remember like all the guys, like the headbangers especially, they would write bands, the name of bands yep. on their jackets. Yep. Scorpion. Or, or or the ones that in school that would uh, carve it into a desk. Oh, dude, all the time. <laughs> dude, I said it again. <laughs> I remember ACDC. I saw that in many a desk. ACDC. Mm -hmm. I had one guy, he was into mechanical drawing. Mm -hmm. And what he did to practice was write every band that he liked, and he was all into metal. Mm -hmm. So he had like Anthrax and uh, Van Halen or Motley Crue. He had all of their songs, their logos, and he would mechanically draw mm -hmm. them and practice. And he was fantastic. I remember the Van Halen logo was awesome back in the day. Still love that. That VH was oh, awesome. So I hate what happened to them. Yeah. It breaks my heart because how everybody wanted David Lee Roth back. Have mm -hmm. you seen him perform now? I haven't seen him for a while, but it's just Nah, He's a know. step away from a court jester, like yeah. doing his little bebop and his yeah. hands, like hey. But do, 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 do. Now, I keep hearing that one of the big reasons is Eddie, Eddie Van Halen is just a complete jerk. Yeah, well, I think he has issues where if you're happier than he is, mm -hmm. do you remember the that movie, The Count of Monte Cristo? Yes. And that yeah. guy said, he goes, "Why? Why are you putting me in prison and sending me away?" He goes, "Cause you're the son of a clerk." You shouldn't be happier than me. Mm -hmm. And he was. He yeah. was a happy guy. He's like, you got all the money and the looks, you know, mm -hmm. and he still wasn't happy. So mm -hmm. they said that Eddie's kind of like that. Yeah. But, so, um. Because I remember when. when uh, <laughs> go! 
I remember when uh, Michael Anthony left. I was like, wow, that the group is no more. It is no more. Michael Anthony and Sammy. Mm-hmm. I watch a ton of what they you know interviews with them on YouTube. Mm-hmm. They are the coolest guys in the world. Yeah. And they are so cool. Their friendship is so cool to see them interact. It's just, they love each other. They're buds. Yeah. And they have a, um, a bunch of bands that they kind of, like he does, what is it? Uh, the Cabo Wabos or Wabaritas or yeah. something like that. Yeah. And Chicken Foot. And one of the bands that they did together, it was uh, called The Other Half. <laughs> and that was their yeah, thing yeah, yeah. A little, Eddie, Eddie and Alex yeah. and then you had the other half yeah I that's awesome it. that was cool that is great now um we we'd already talked about the break dancing and, and all of that did you get into the clothes of the 80s I really didn't I mean you said you were I, late on the yeah the I mean I, I that's one of those things I was always pretty much Jeans and T-shirts, which know? was big. But, but that's, not, that's 80s though. But not like you know, like the oh man, I'm trying to like you remember like Madonna, right? You know, you had some guys that would wear makeup and stuff, like uh, Boy George. Oh yeah, I was like, yeah, that ain't happening. Oh, and, and they were. Pe- I mean, you the, mean at your school they were doing? Yeah. That? Oh wow. Yeah, I mean the girls would come in with looking like G- Cindy Lauper. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they, I remember one day I saw a girl come in, like, in a wedding dress, like uh, Madonna from the MTV Awards, the mm-hmm. Like a Virgin one. I'm like, are you kidding me? Dude. I did it again. <laughs> Man, we'd like to apologize for all the hangovers tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. Madonna, that was so risque yep. and scandalous mm-hmm. and everybody was talking about that the next day yep. because you remember I, I, being a kid oh, re- you watched I remember being and I watched that award show because I believe it was their very first uh, MTV awards well that's the whole thing mm-hmm. everybody watched that award show or or the award shows back mm-hmm. then yeah I mean we used to take and have everybody get together yep. if we you know say hey we're not going to work tonight everybody's off let's go over we're going to watch the MTV music awards mm-hmm. oh, who's going to be on and it was a laundry list of yeah. you know your favorite. Oh, bands. it was everybody back then. I mean, no one was like, "Yeah, I'm not going to that." Everybody was there. Everybody would go. I remember Michael Jackson on there. He's like, "Wait, he just moonwalked." Did you remember? Did you oh. ever watch that when he first did? I think it was on the American Music Awards AMAs. Did I remember? That. Was that wasn't when uh, him and Slash were on there? Was it? No, that's that was down that, the that road. was way later. That was yeah. way later. Because I remember he had that red jacket on. He had the glasses and I was like, yeah, oh, that was way later. Yeah. The, uh, the one where he f- first did the moonwalk mm-hmm. that everybody went nuts on mm-hmm. that. That's what really lit the fuse for the King of pop. Yeah. Cause he did, it was Billy Jean mm-hmm. and he did it on the AMAs and during the, you know, bridge when it was just the music, you know, mm-hmm. he did the moonwalk and mm-hmm. he was doing his dance and all of a sudden he broke that out mm-hmm. and the place, I still remember coming out of yeah. my seat. It's like, did you just see what he did? Yeah. And he, you know who taught him that? No. Turbo. Really? Yep. For those who don't know Turbo. Michael Chambers, mm-hmm. Boogaloo Shrimp from mm-hmm. Breakin, the Breakin mm-hmm. movies. Michael had seen, you know, um, him do some stuff and asked him to teach it to him. Mm-hmm. And he taught him that and some popping and locking in the yeah. robot and stuff and worked with him for a long time. And he said when he broke it out, it was just like, wow. I mean, because when he did, it looked like he was just kind of floating backwards. backwards. It was insane. Uh, you remember Eddie Murphy? Yeah. He's like, I don't know how he dances anybody. He's like, hey, you want to dance? Hey, where are you going? Wait, are you going away from me? <laughs> <laughs> it was in Raw, right? Or yeah, it was, it was one of those two. It was like, oh, my goodness. Now, I don't know if this is true, but I heard that there, it was a rumor that after that performance, when he had gotten off after a little while, he got a phone call that somebody gave to him and said, hey, you're going to want to take this. And it was Fred Astaire. Mm. Now, Fred Astaire is known back then as mm-hmm. the greatest expression of dance yeah you know of a remember him and ginger rogers and stuff yeah. like that. Wow. gene kelly mm-hmm. and he said he goes hey i just wanted to call and tell you i saw your performance the way you dance is magic that is awesome <laughs> that <laughs> is completely awesome and i and uh, michael had said that in an interview he said that was probably the greatest compliment i have ever gotten or will ever receive for from fred astaire that but, Wow. Uh, now, uh, there's there's also a bunch of different genres in the music world. Like you had 
the pop stuff like Madonna, Michael Jackson, Cindy Lauper, Culture Club, Boy George and yep. them. Mm -hmm. um, then you had kind of like the new wave stuff that would be like Tears for Fears, yep. uh, Simple Minds. Mm -hmm. You know, like you'd be thinking of the Breakfast Club and that stuff. Um, and then rock artists that the band wasn't the focal point, but the singer was. Yeah. Like Brian Adams. Mm -hmm. um, Brian Adams, that whole, like when he came out with Summer of 69. Mm-hmm. I was like, it was yeah. not. It was not in '69. No, no. <laughs> that I was like, I'm gonna go buy that tape. Yeah, because it wasn't CDs. It was a cassette tape. Cassette tapes back with there. Walkmans. Yep. Man, uh, I love my Walkman back in the day. Oh, you remember that guy I was telling you about with the pressed jeans? Mm -hmm. I remember too. It almost made me a little bit jealous because every time it didn't matter what coat he had on the inside pocket, he'd have his Walkman mm -hmm. in, and like you know, a mixtape that he had made up, and it was like. He was a headbanger, but it was like his Walkman was like polished. Mm -hmm. You know, the mixtape it was written on there wasn't all scratched in like the Guardians of the Galaxy and a magic marker. Yeah. It was like mechanically pencil drawn. Oh. <laughs> just everything was neat and perfect. And I was I was more like a real life Marty McFly. Is, we talked sleep about in my clothes, wake up, skateboard to school in you know, at the last minute. That was me. Back to the Future, one of the great movies from back then. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have emulated Marty McFly as a uh, role model, but I was like, <laughs> I like that guy. Did you ever um, skateboard? Oh, yeah. yeah. Then did you uh, hang on to a car and try? No, no, We no. did it with uh, bicycles. Yeah, we used to do it with yeah, bikes. It was great. And it was trucks normally. It, it was great until you had to turn. Oh yeah, yeah. Dude. My turn ended up like hey, that. Pavement tastes good because I'm eating it. But it's funny because <laughs> the the time that I was skateboarding, we weren't doing like the Tony Hawk yeah. tricks and all that yeah. kind of stuff. It was to get from A to B, That's exactly and it looked like we were, a yeah. surfboard. Mm -hmm. Now I remember my first um, really nice skateboard mm -hmm. I bought from a guy at camp, and it was a um, uh, Dogtown. Really? Yeah, and it was a big board, and it was the first time I'd ever seen one like yeah, that. Because we had the the little plastic thing. Looked like little surfboards. Yeah, and it was. I think mine was like blue. I've I've still got a blue. <laughs> it, the bearings are all rusted. You mm -hmm. can't roll it. Yeah, I still have one of those at my house. Man, I remember I, that. I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. And you could feel every. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going over. He's like, every little thing you're feeling it. If you if there's a pebble there, you're going. Oh, over it. you're feeling it. <laughs> Um, did you watch that documentary, The Lord's of Dog? Oh, yeah, yeah. Is that the greatest yeah. documentary of that all time? That is phenomenal. The director of that is Stacey Peralta. If mm -hmm. you haven't ever seen it, it's called Z, Dog, Z Town and or Z Boys in Dogtown. Yeah. Um, Stacey Peralta was one of the original um, Zephyr team guys, yep. the Z Boys. And he's the a filmmaker now, made the documentary. Another documentary that he made that I cannot give enough thumbs up to is probably one of my favorite documentaries of all time is called riding giants. I don't know that one. It's about riding big wave riding surfing. Oh, yeah. If you watch it, you're going to get sucked in. You're going to, you're going to finish it. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Starts out with the history way back. And you know, they use animation because I mean, back then they didn't film it and go up to the black and white and all the way up to today with Lake Laird Hamilton. Oh, that's cool. Fantastic. But, uh, <laughs> Dig, go it. I shouldn't have said that. Yeah, you shouldn't have said it. It's gonna kill me now. <laughs> uh, they they had the movie where they were. I know. I'm trying to get yeah, through I, it, man. I, I, I'm trying not to giggle, but it cracks me up. You're gonna have to take over because yeah. my first response is like, okay, but um, <laughs> but um, but um. If you're the drinking game now, should change to from dude to but um. But um. <laughs> Do you remember when you first saw Tony Hawk? Not really, because to be honest, it, once that world started, it didn't interest me. Mm -hmm. I remember because we like had, an Ollie, we had a book fair, and I remember somebody was like, "Dude, it's Tony Hawk." I'm like, "Who is Tony Hawk?" Was he at the book fair, or there no, was no, a no. book? It, it was, you know, a Tony Hawk book. You, it was a book. It was a, I think it was a calendar actually. Okay. And I'm just like looking at this. I'm like, "Who is this guy?" And then I, someone showed me they had old VHS tape, and I was like. He can do those things on a skateboard? Right. Like, are you kidding me? It did not connect with me, and I mm -hmm. don't know why. My cousin, Justin, mm -hmm. Justin Breakstone, rest in peace. He was killed in a car accident in the early 90s. 
and around here got to be kind of a local hero mm -hmm. because he was so good during that time when it was peaking. Yeah. And was was a sponsored skater. They really? would sponsor him to go to competitions and give him free boards and gear and clothes. And everybody loved him. And that's when I started paying attention. When Justin started making the noise, he was my younger cousin, but he lived with us for so long. Him and his sister, um, he was like my little brother. And to see him do this, I was like, you know, wow, you're really good at this. You know? Um, and so I did, I started appreciating it then. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's so awesome. That is going to take years to get broken from me. It ain't going to happen now. Not now. No, 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 no. <laughs> Lord. Man. I just, I feel so bad now that I said that. I really I'm do. glad you did, but I've got to train myself now. <laughs> But, um, hey, do this. Name some of your favorite um, hair bands. Because hair bands for me were one of my favorite part of the 80s. Well, let me I know they were for you too, right? Yeah. Well, let me say this. Does Guns N' Roses count as one? Because when they come up, they had some massive hair. Oh, yeah. They're definitely a hair um, band. Metallic, they had huge hair, but no, they don't count. No, they're, they're um, different metal. I remember Warrant. We always accused them of the ones who killed it. Yeah. Um, I, I liked their music when I, they were I out there. I too. Though. I liked Winger and both Winger, those. Yeah. Winger and Warren always mm. get just. They get destroyed. I mean, they get assassinated. I will tell you why I was always like, yeah, they did kill it. Was because there used to be roller derby on TV. And their music would be the opening for every time. Oh, really? I was like, you know what? Maybe they did really kill it. Yeah, they could have killed it. <laughs> I'll tell you who else I liked is um, White Lion. Yeah, I was thinking about them too. They had that song, Wait. Oh, love that song. Yeah. To this day, um, if that ends up on one of my playlists, like, you know, it's, it's on my playlist, you know, mm -hmm. or my collection for my iPod. And if I put Shuffle and that comes on, I just, oh. Yeah. That whole album, I like Tell Me. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Um, Scorpions was good. Scorpions. A couple uh, of their did things. We see them no, we did not see them in concert. Oh, I'll tell you, these guys were not a hair band. And it's one of my favorite bands of all times. And they're from the 80s. Mm -hmm. Queen. Queen, yeah. Mm -hmm. With the Highlander soundtrack? Yeah. That's the first time I ever heard them. And I was like... Do you remember REO Speedwagon? Oh, love them. Yeah, man. love them. I wouldn't call there. them a hair band. Call no. them a regular pop mm -hmm. rock band. But um, they were good. Yeah, Huey Lewis and the News. One of my favorite bands in I the mean, 80s. I mean, they... Yeah. Power yeah, of Love, dude. Yeah, I was going to say, one of these days we're going to do um, uh, soundtracks with movies. And, dude, you can't watch Back to the Future without the power of love. Well, not only that, if you're talking soundtracks, you mm -hmm. got to mention Kenny Loggins. Kenny Loggins. Mm -hmm. You know, Danger Zone. Mm -hmm. I mean. Uh, Top Gun. Great movie. What was the other one? I'm All Right. That was Caddyshack. Caddyshack. Mm -hmm. What was the one he did with Stallone? Meet Me Halfway. The arm wrestling movie. Over the Top? Over the Top. I don't remember the song in that one. Yeah. It was a ballad. Uh, really good. Uh, Footloose. Mm -hmm. That's. I. I still. You know, it's it's love. bloody. I remember seeing the movies. Like I really don't like the movie, but man, I love that song. I remember in high school. You didn't like Footloose? I I, I no the the movie itself. No. Oh, I love the movie. The movie was good too. I mean, bacon. We've got bacon. <laughs> but I remember uh, high school dances. That song come out. You heard loud screams by all the girls, and everybody ran to the dance floor. Let me tell you, we went to um, a buddy of mine's wedding down in North Carolina. Shout out to Tommy Richardson. Mm -hmm. And when that song came on, everybody screamed and yeah. ran out on the dance yeah. floor to this day. Um, when I, was, I was thinking of some other other groups and stuff. Oh, I forgot them. Oh, got it. Um, Motley Crue, they came out about that. Time. Oh, Quiet Riot. Quiet Riot. I loved Quiet Riot. Yeah, if you're going to say then, then you got to mention Twisted Sister. Yeah, that's the next group. Yeah. Um, not too long ago, they came out with a Twisted Christmas album. I heard that. I Might liked have been from it you. myself. <laughs> I like that myself. I know a lot of people are like, that's just stupid. But. Def Leppard. I know mm -hmm. we talked about them yeah. already, but when Hysteria came out, mm -hmm. I'm. that was one of those albums that I listened to. Without taking the tape off, it just kept going. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd listen to the whole front and then the whole back. Because yeah. a lot of times I'd cherry pick the ones I like and yeah. fast forward. I, I mean, because, you know, we talk about mixtapes. And today's kids, they can just go and, and buy a song here, buy a song they there. They don't have any clue. We had to sit there and wait. 
by by the boom box yep. or yep. and wait to hit record yep. to record our big songs man that was so awesome and they don't understand how hard it was if mm. you wanted to get through that song to get to another one yep fast forwarding and just yep. and then try and play yep. okay it's not there yep. oh i went too far rewind yep. and i remember the first time somebody said i've got a tape deck that you push fast forward and it'll automatically stop mm -hmm. at the break i was like really mm -hmm. and then cds and i was like okay wow i uh, going back to Grandmaster Flash, you know, when he would um, do stuff and he would just make it go from like just the part he wanted to hear. Do you know how he did that? How? Because he made he had two two turntables and he had like the one one part of the song. He would stop it, go to the other one, had that part of the song while he's fixing the other side. A crown. Just a crown. He's like, this is where it is. And it went around. The, the record went around. Did you just say a crayon? Crayon. Okay, because I thought you said a crown. A crown. Okay, that's you, yeah. You say crayon. We always say crown. I was like, not he, C R O W. -N. He put a king's crown. Yes, and that's how he did it. I, I was like, I was like, how in the world does that work? A crayon. A, a crayon. crayon. A crayon. A Crayola crayon. But and he would see the record went around five times. So while while the other one's playing, he set it back to the beginning. Click the other one. Back to the other one. And that's how that got invented. How about that? Grand Master Flash. The man. The man. Mm -hmm. Oh, another band that we have to mention from the hair bands, um, Bon Jovi. Mm hmm Yep. And I have Poison, to, Rat. Oh, dude, Rat. <laughs> rat I loved. I love me some Rat. Invasion of Your Privacy is one of my favorite mm -hmm. albums, too. Stephen Percy. Poison, open up and say, ah. I remember the first time my brother actually got that tape, mm -hmm. and it was um, "Look What the Cat Dragged In." Yeah, and it had this picture of four girls on the tape case. Till I found out, no, those aren't girls. That's them. <laughs> yes. And I was like, <laughs> they're wearing like chick makeup. He goes, "Yeah, it's called glam rock." Yeah. I was like, it's called weird. <laughs> but then I put it in, and I listened. The first song I um, heard was um, "Talk Dirty to Me." Yeah. And I could Gosh. not play that song Dude, enough. I love that, that song. song right there. It's so awesome. My, that is a great one. It's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. My my favorite Poison song is Fallen Angel. Yes. That love was a that. great song. Remember, uh, Skid Row? Skid Row I loved. I mm -hmm. love their ballad. Um, uh, what is it? 18 I Remember Life. You. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 18 in Life I Remember was good. Will really liked I Skid Row. I love that song. I think the reason I like that song was my best friend's name was Ricky. And I was uh -huh. like, hey, you're a young boy. You had a heart of gold. Uh, heart uh -huh. of stone, excuse me. Yeah, that was you. Hey, real quick, Bon Jovi, though. I remember mm -hmm. that was my favorite MTV Awards was when they came out and did Wanted Dead or Alive yeah. acapella. Yeah, that was epic. That blew me away because mm -hmm. you always wondered, do they really sound that good or is it all like in the producing? Well, a lot of them don't sound that a good. A lot of them don't. Yeah, Bon Jovi is an exception. He's fantastic. Um, um, I tell you, hey, my, that's what started MTV Unplugged. Did you know that? Yes, that, that's yes, where I the, did that's know where that. Came yes, from. I'm and still waiting for Metallica to do that. You, you remember <laughs> when Bon Jovi wanted to do um, acting? He wanted to get into acting, and he started mm -hmm. doing these bit parts and mm -hmm. stuff. Do you remember he did one? I think it was called U five seven one, and it was a submarine movie. Yes, I do remember yeah. that. Yeah. He just had a bit that, part. That was around the time when um, Hunt for Red October came out, I believe. It might have. And that was the other submarine movie that yeah. was competing with it. One of the guys, he, he, he played a doctor on one like ER or something like that. And he was in the movie too. And they were interviewing him like an MTV behind the scenes thing. Like, mm -hmm. hey, you know, John Bon Jovi, he came in. He's, you know, trying his hand at acting and he did a little bit here. What was it like working with him? And he's like, oh, well, you know, uh, he's a fantastic guy because – He's such a big mega star, mm -hmm. but he acted just like one of the guys. He did not want special treatment. Yeah. He didn't want to be a diva. He wanted to be one of the boys. Mm -hmm. So he did his thing. And and after a while, you know, we start thinking he's one of the boys. Just yeah. John. Hey, John. Yeah, no, no. yeah. He goes, we're filming and we filmed um, some of it in Europe. And I, we went out to a bar and everybody, you know, he comes into the bar and, and everybody goes nuts. Mm hmm. And before we knew it, they had gotten him up on stage. And, like, you could tell he, he didn't really want to do it. But he knew if I don't, these people are going to be like, yeah, he was a jerk. Yep. He goes, let me go up there. He goes, when he took that mic, he went from our buddy John. Mm -hmm. 
okay, now we understand what a rock star is. Yeah. He goes. He went from John to Bon Jovi. To Bon Jovi. He goes, <laughs> the guy owned the stage and the crowd in a way that I feel privileged to have been there. It was a small club. And Bon Jovi was in there just killing it. That's awesome. And it was. He goes. He goes. Now I understand what a movie star and what a rock star. He goes. Mm -hmm. That dude was a god. Yeah. Cool story, right? I, I mean, love he, that. You know, to this day, everyone says when they meet him, just a good, just a good dude. No kidding. Just a good guy. And th that that you know, it's always good to hear that about somebody. Yeah, because you don't want to hear the opposite. Yeah. You're like, oh man. Because when it does, it's like, man, my guy is a jerk. Dude. Dang that, it. That's like Eddie Van Halen forever. Mm -hmm. When 5150 came out, mm -hmm. I wanted to blame David Lee Roth because Eddie was one of my heroes, you know, the guitar hero. Yeah. And when Sammy came in, it was all together. And when it happened to Sammy, I was like, wait a minute. Sammy, I could tell, wasn't a jerk. Sammy's one of the coolest guys ever. Yeah. Oh, man. I was heartbroken to find out that, yeah. Then they got that guy from uh, what group? Was Extreme. It? Yeah. I never liked Extreme, by the way. I did. Loved Extreme. Oh. Oh, man. In fact, if you want to see one of the coolest things they ever did, they were in Wembley Stadium mm -hmm. and they did a Queen medley on like it was a Queen celebration concert mm -hmm. type of thing. And Gary Sharon and Nuno and the, the guys all did a medley of Queen songs. Gary Sharon, I remember at that point, probably got you know more exposure and props for the range of his voice. They were like, mm -hmm. OK, the songs he does are good, but that's live on stage and he killed it. Mm -hmm. Dude, awesome. Okay. You didn't like that? I, not, not big. Uh, Get the funk down. I, you know, I, like I was that? just never big with, with that group. I don't know. I remember that song. Was it More Than Words? Yep. That's I remember okay. that song, which I thought that song was all right, but just, I don't know. I never got big into them. There are some groups that I just never got big, like Tesla. That's a group I never liked. I like Tesla too. Signs. Um, what was that I one? I hated that song. Cowboy. It was Sun, an American cowboy. Signs everywhere. It's like, shut up. I don't care about stupid sign. <laughs> oh, dude, there's a couple that are that just song. straight good. Uh, wait, uh, was four non blondes? Yeah, that I, I want to say those were 90s, but I despise that group with a passion. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, that didn't do nothing for me. <laughs> that was horrible. Uh, if you're talking the 80s, too, um, White Snake. Yes. Because here I go again. Yeah, that, that's uh, me. I hear that song today. I'm like, crank it up. Oh, dude, me too. If that's on, I'm cranking that up. Mm -hmm. um, one of my favorite, in fact, they're probably in my top three bands, Journey, mm -hmm. with Steve Perry. Yep. Man, that group, I remember they were huge. Uh, Europe come out around that time, too, I believe. Europe came out with the final countdown. Mm -hmm. They were good, but they were – that's when – even as a kid, I mm -hmm. said, there's something that's too polished about them. Mm -hmm. They look too manufactured. You know what I'm saying? You, to me. You want something that's too manufactured? Millie Vanilli. Oh, wow. <laughs> they were so manufactured, they didn't even sing themselves. Wasn't that crazy when that came out? You were yeah. like, how did that slip through and yeah. get, you know, get they got the award? Yeah, it's like, that was crazy. Uh, one of my friends, they were in Roanoke. He went to see him in Roanoke. He, he, to this day, he still has the hat he bought at that concert. He bought a Millie Vanilli hat? Millie Vanilli hat. I don't know if I would admit it. Even when they were big like that, mm -hmm. I never, they weren't my cup of tea. Girl, you know it's true. Ooh, 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 ooh. I want you. <laughs> I, I, I just didn't dig them. I was like, they, they were so pop, you know. So, you know, we're just going to make this a music one because that's that's what it is. It has to be. At some point, we'll, we'll do movies as well. But um, but we haven't ever talked about uh, music. Yeah. And yeah. in the 80s, wasn't that a huge part of your yeah, life? That was. I mean, it was huge. I mean, we would be outside and we would. Uh, we didn't have AC. Most people didn't have AC back then. Oh, yeah, we didn't. And so we have, you know, the windows open. So we would plug in a boom box because we were outside all the time. Oh, yeah, we There were no video there. games. There were no computers. Nope. So we'd be outside. We'd have the boom box playing oh, like yeah. the Casey's Top 40. Oh, it's the best. Every week. And we'd be outside like playing baseball or football, whatever season it was. It's so funny. The Top 40 was something that you followed. Yeah. You wanted to know who's number one this week. Yeah. Is this going to make it? Like it mattered. Yeah. You know, and it really <laughs> did. <laughs> I mean, to us, it's like, come on, come on, who's number one? Yeah. Oh, he fell to number three? Dude, how Are does that happen? Me? No way. <laughs> and, and every night, the request line, the most yeah. request song of the night mm. for the fifth week in a row. Yep. Gosh, New I kids don't... on the block, the right stuff. You're like, I'm, I'm going to kill did somebody. They, did they come out in the 80s or I the think 90s? They were, 
They might have been nineties. I, I was thinking nice, but you know, Donnie and the boys. Yeah, yeah. Donnie's our that. age, right? Yeah. Man, Man, but the I didn't say um. No. I I I might have yeah. broke the streak. And in two more minutes, we will hear another one. All right, dude. <laughs> <laughs> dude. <laughs> dude. Um, what else? Oh uh, gosh, so much music during that. I'll day. tell you, Will is a music encyclopedia. Mm-hmm. I I feel like I'm you know immersed and know a lot about it. My buddy Will was somebody who would listen to the B sides, and every other tape that that group released, uh-huh. he would know every song mm-hmm. about bands I had never heard of. Mm-hmm. And he, to this day, he's like, "Oh, you, you need to listen to this. You need to listen." I, I, I He'll throw re- me some gems. I still remember when uh, ACDC. I loved ACDC when they when I first heard of them. I I was like, man, I don't know, man. I don't yeah. know about them. I remember that. Love that, them. That Shook first, me all night long. That when that I heard first that cassette, I, like, I remember seeing. You see uh, Angus on there. He's got the devil horns and holding a, a, a say, like a devil tail. Yeah, that's why I was kind of not into it. I was like, dude, I don't know if I'm down with that. Mm-hmm. You know, they're like devil worshippers, and they're not. They're not. Yeah. Oh, real quick though about uh, Will, what he would mm-hmm. do um, is have all of these things kind of mentally cataloged, right? Mm-hmm. And it was so neat because one time I said, look, the ones that nobody ever heard that should have been released and been popular. Send me a list of those. And he said, I'll do better than that. I'll take and put them on a flash drive. And he put this flash drive together. And it was like going to an alternate universe's Mm -hmm. 80s best of. Oh, that is awesome. And it was so cool. I was like, I've never heard any of these songs. And Mm -hmm. I love them. Some of them I had heard, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, But, man, that was cool. Another one, like Brian Adams that was um, good, was uh, Rick Springfield. Yes. Jesse's Girl. Love I the guitar on, solo. I remember in him that. on General Hospital. Oh, you see, now I never watched soap operas well, growing up. Here's the thing: I was in hospitals all those years, and, and that's what they had yeah, on in the yeah. afternoons. I mean, you had like four hours of soap operas, and and they didn't have any other option. We yeah. didn't have cable. Yeah, there was no talk shows and all that stuff. Back Satellite then. dish. I mean, before they, um, before those, you had game shows on. Before that, yeah, eleven o'clock was um, Price, Price is Right. Is right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Dude, the price is wrong, Bob. Um, before I forget this, another uh, artist I loved back in the day, LL Cool J. Oh, I remember going back to Cali. Man, I don't, I don't think, think so. so. Love that. I love that he stayed uh, ahead of the curve mm-hmm. and got into acting. Yeah. And took care of himself so well. I mean, he's a beast, man. Yeah. That guy, yeah. he's one of those guys that. You would never want to say you got your tail whooped by a star. Yeah. Because you always want to think they're privileged softies. Mm -hmm. That's a dude you shouldn't mess with. Yeah. LL is going to bring it. Because mama said knock you out. He did. I remember watching that. He was like, that is a beast of a man right there. He's he's a man, dude. I loved him in uh, Deep Blue Sea Mm -hmm. when he played the cook. Yeah. (laughs) He was great. And, um... I remember Crush Groove. He was in that. Yep. I think that might have been his really first thing he ever did. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm sure. Because he was himself, I mean, really. He was a young, young kid in that. And then he was wearing like those Kangol hats. Mm-hmm. You know, it looked like uh, something you'd wear on a safari, but yeah. red. <laughs> oh, man. You know, the safari yeah. white bowl hat? Yeah. That's kind of what it was. Or something that Gilligan would have if he took and unfolded yeah. his sailor cap. Yeah, and, and had it red. Damn. Love Gilligan. The fat too. boys. Fat Fat boys boys are back. I remember they had some movies. Oh, and their personalities were Condition Critical, I think, was one of them. (sighs) Something like that. I remember Disorderlies. Disorderlies. uh, That was... uh, A song or an album. That was a Quiet Riot uh, album. Okay. Condition Critical, yep. I think they might have even had a role. No. It was that movie, Disorderlies. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, the beginning of uh, Gangsta Rap. Oh, dude! I was, NWA. I was never into it, man. I, I remember hearing. Um, In fact, I didn't like anything that was militant. I was like, "That's not me." Oh man, that first song, um, "Straight Out of Compton." I remember hearing that, and I was like, "What is this?" Yeah, it it was. I mean, did you dig it? Like, to uh, where I'm gonna go buy it? I will say, well, no, I I wasn't gonna be allowed to buy it. All right, but I remember 
white kid from Bedford, Virginia. Yeah. And I heard that. I was like, I don't know. This is, it sounds good, but I don't know if I like it or not. When I hear that song now, I absolutely love it. Oh, dude, I, I do too. I love it. Um, and think about who all was in there. I mean, yeah, Dre and Ice Cube. I, Ice Easy. Cube. Um, who else Easy. Was in that? Um, those three. Um, Ice Cube always came across like, that dude will kill you. Yeah. He would kill you. I mean, if you stepped to him, that'd be the last thing you ever did. And then there was the two other guys. Yeah, right. I hate to say that, but I cannot think. Well, I saw the movie not too long ago. Still can't think of who the other wow. two guys how, were. How was the movie? I thought it was good. I thought everybody said it was really mm -hmm. good. And uh, Ice Cube's son played Ice Cube. Now, I heard that. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, he knocked out of the park. Ice Cube even said that. He mm -hmm. goes, man, I'm really proud. He, he mm -hmm. nailed it. It's good. And, I mean, look at those guys now. I mean, they're doing like, are we home yet? smart and things like that's like it, man i mean dre sold beats by dre is like a billionaire dre to me was always the brains behind all of those guys mm -hmm. you know isn't isn't that the way you felt now i i don't know because mm -hmm. i didn't watch the you know now, movie well yet. according to the movie uh you know suge knight was the guy yeah well no he was trying to take over everything and dre had already started making a lot of money and he was like, I'm getting out of here. I'm done with this. Because they, they were doing some stuff that he did not like. And he was like, I need I'm to done. watch that. I would love to know and that And he story. said, and Suge was like, well, this is all mine. You can't. And he's like, he left everything. He left rights to everything he'd already done to them. And he still killed it. Kicked butt. Wow. I, was like, that, I love hearing that's that. That's impressive to me when you got this. I've done all this stuff and I've got to turn my back on it. Like, right? Wow. Ice Cube, if you've ever heard any of his interviews, mm -hmm. super intelligent. Yeah. And so smart with his money. Mm -hmm. He always, um, he was like, you know, if I could give any advice to the new young rappers coming mm -hmm. up, the number one thing would be save your money. That's one thing that goes across the board. Yeah. They say a lot of athletes are the same way. Well, because you've never had it. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden you think, I'm unlimitedly rich forever. And that that's, doesn't exist. You start buying mm -hmm. million dollar yachts. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, you only have so many million. Mm -hmm. Now you and I, literally one million dollars or a couple million, you put it in the bank, we could live on the interest and live exactly how we're living now forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Never work another day. Mm -hmm. But if you start doing like MC Hammer did, yep. having fifty people in your entourage and then catering to them, you yeah. know. Hammer and ice. Vanilla Ice, were they? They were late '80s, weren't they? Early '90s. Early '90s. Okay, I, was I know MC Hammer was because when I was in mm -hmm. boot camp, because I Fort thought Benny. Hammer come out just before Vanilla Ice. I don't or, know. They were right in that same ballpark. Could have been, but I, but I remember uh, my brother coming down to my uh, graduation from boot camp mm -hmm. and asked him because it was only three months, well, two months of you know basic training and a month of AIT. But it was three months of not being exposed to anything from television, media at all. Mm -hmm. And I said, what's big in music right now? And he told me about MC Hammer, Can't Touch This. Wilson mm -hmm. Phillips was big at the time. I liked Wilson Phillips. I'm not going to lie about that it. China I Phillips, man, hot, hot, mm -hmm. hot, dude. Even to this day, she's beautiful. I, I, don't, I never knew why I liked them because it was... It was a group that was really different from what I was liking at the time. I got you. Let's see. I'm trying. I'm actually looking to see when. Oh, please hammer, don't hurt them. Come out on February 1990. Yeah, and that's that's when I was in Fort Benning. Mm hmm. Yeah, I just I don't know why I, I was thinking it was. Uh, I, a I year knew that, that because that was what he told me. I mean, mm -hmm. I can still remember my graduation day when they wow. picked me up and took me home. That's my senior year of high school. Oh wow. I'm just a baby. I've been out for a couple years. <laughs> Man, so much good stuff. Um, you know, computers. That's when they really first started coming out. I remember Atari when that came out. I want to say that actually came out late at the end of the 70s before it really hit in the, big in the 80s. Yeah. Do you remember the idea that everybody was talking one day every house will have a computer? And you were like. That is the craziest thing. You're talking the Jetsons there, dude. Yeah. And I mean, how many computers do you have in your house? Well, look at it this way. You walk around with one in your hand all the time, a cell phone. Yep. 
Because they, they said a cell phone was as much as they had to launch a ship to the moon. Yeah, it had more computing power. I'm like, yeah. really? I can send something to the moon? Unreal. It, it kills me, too, because I try not to be addicted to the technology. It's tough, isn't it? It's hard not mm -hmm. to be looking at your phone if there's a lull in the conversation. Mm -hmm. And you're like, yeah, let me just check my Facebook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. So. I mean, you're in line at a grocery store looking at the phone. Uh, dude, I try. I, I don't want to admit this, but at the stoplight, <laughs> it's like Troy. I, I've been there, done that. I hate that. And, and it's one thing I've, I've really said, I'm going to do this. And is when I'm hanging out with somebody, we're like eating. I'm the, not the, the phone. The phone is down. It's yep. it's it. I'll answer the phone if it looks like it because you know it's caller ID on it too. Yeah. I mean, I can see if it's something mm -hmm. that I need to. If not, I'll let it ring. Now, do you remember in the day you have twenty phone numbers in your head? Oh, yeah. I don't remember anybody's numbers now. I couldn't call anybody outside of my family's phone number. Yeah, uh, if my contacts didn't come up. Yeah, like we talk every day. I don't know your phone number, mm -hmm. but it's in my phone. Yeah, you know. And it's, um, I don't know. I guess when I was a kid, I, I mean, it's I, my had, phone. I, don't know I had number. 30 phone numbers in my head. Like it was nothing. If someone said like my friends in the neighborhood, Eddie, Jamie, uh, Robbie, Rodney, uh, Troy, it's like, I can name this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And I was like, I guess they have a phone. Now let me look on my phone and see. I still remember before we had phones like that. I still mm -hmm. have friends numbers in my head that I could rattle off right now. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Jamie's, I could, I could tell you Jamie's number, like, bop, 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 bop. I mean, nothing. Man, that's crazy. And, and I haven't called that number in like 10 years. And do you yeah. remember the first time someone had a computer? Uh, I remember one of my friends, he had the Commodore 64. I remember hearing about the Commodore 64, but it was something like, nah, I don't get that. I think the first one I ever had was a Compax, mm -hmm. yeah, which was a, a basic thing from like i don't know office max or yeah I remember, do you I, remember the first time that you got on line that was did you have a cd that you had to put in for aol dial up uh we no did we you had to have dial up that's how it, all of us had i remember then. we had dial up remember but, going but but we had it at my brother's um, <laughs> at his store that's the first time we had that. It had to be dial-up, though. You mm -hmm. remember the dial-up? Because yeah. I remember I had web TV. Explain that. Okay, basically you have a keyboard, and you hook it up to your television. Oh. And you could only surf the internet. You couldn't download anything or anything like that. It was just surfing the internet. What was the first search engine you remember? Oh, it was AOL. Uh, instead of Google? Yeah, I mean, we had AOL, so we, we had No, everything. no, no. I, I'm saying, you know how Google is your search engine, yeah. like you Google it? Before I, Google, I don't what remember, did you use? I don't remember anything before Google. I, I remember the biggest one I used before anything was called AltaVista. Yeah, I don't remember that. And then I started using Yahoo, mm -hmm. and then I went to Google. Because I just remember having AOL... I was, well, I had, like I said, I had web TV and they just had a homepage and you can just type in whatever you want and stuff will come up. Oh, I gotcha. Now, I don't know. I don't remember. That's probably why you don't. That's how you did yeah. computer, you know, back then. And back then it's like, I had to have an address for something. I don't See, that's why I search engine and mm -hmm. that's why I loved AltaVista. I just mm -hmm. put in a search like, um, I think the first thing I remember ever searching was martial arts stuff. Mm -hmm. Ever. Um, and... That's when I started like tape trading with people. Oh, I remember um, I first met you was in 2000. Yeah. And we, yeah, I became somehow part of the group. Yeah. In uh, about 2000, maybe the end of 2000. Yep. Or 2001. Somewhere right. in that ballpark. And I remember you used to, it's Friday nights. <laughs> we yes. had, you had, you'd bring a different video over. I remember the, the one that always stuck in my head was watching Rom and Decker fight. Oh, dude, you remember that? Oh, my goodness. I, I was like, diamond. this is the greatest thing. Like, when he kicked somebody, it was just like damage. Destruction. Done. It was crazy. It was like a car hitting a deer. I would go online, and when I figured out I could do this, mm -hmm. it was, that's all I did. Yeah. I would be like a treasure hunter mm -hmm. trying to get information. And um, back then, it was... Um, 
like events that we had heard about, like um, Thai boxing. Any mm-hmm. time, if I got a a guy who said, you know, hey man, I've got like um, a four hours of tape from Muay Thai kickboxing from all over Europe and uh, Thailand. Oh wow, yeah, how much, right? And you know, at the beginning, I bought them, and then I yeah. made a little collection that I could trade with. Mm-hmm. And then once it started expanding, I never had to buy anything else. Yeah, could you copy them? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they were totally black market bootleg yeah. stuff and some of the quality no, I mean, was I, I, hideous so one of my friends he had a, a vcr because i remember the first one i ever saw you had like the you put it in the top and you push it down yep uh, but i don't remember him having a way to record them what you had to do was set two vcrs up yeah. together one would play mm-hmm. and one while it was record, playing yeah. would be recording mm-hmm. so it would have to be like the circuit you created yeah. with top bottom and tv and Every generation of copy of a copy of a copy yeah. got more denigrated and worse and worse. And I remember sometimes, <laughs> I think I paid like huge bucks. I don't even want to admit how much I paid. I had everybody give me like, you know, 15 bucks or something. And it was six hours of Hicks and Gracie. Uh-huh. And it had fights. It had training. It had interviews. It had everything. And that tape, when I got it, I think we paid 100 bucks. Mm-hmm was absolutely it was a step away from unwatchable oh gosh it was i remember seeing some of those yeah it was <laughs> terrible <laughs> okay was it in comparison to uh your parents are away and you're going to watch cinemax but you don't get cinemax oh it was not <laughs> that bad <laughs> that was like fuzz <laughs> <laughs> like, like, there's a hand i saw a hand i saw a hand i saw a hand awesome. Greatest thing we've ever done. Oh, was, I remember doing that, man. That was crazy. Um, Kids today will not understand. They that don't at get it all. Not a bit. That's a podcast we can never have. No. <laughs> I don't know what Cinemax is. I don't even know what it is. But I used to get like Muay Thai fights, and then back then we had shoot wrestling fights mm-hmm. and K one, and Gosh, then when the I loved K one. Oh, K1 was awesome. Mm-hmm. Still love that. I even liked when they started introducing the lighter weights. Uh, they called it K1 Roman Axe. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, when MMA hit, when the UFC and Hoist hit, not only was the UFC big to, tr- to trade, but it was huge to find all these other events like M1 and Pride mm-hmm. and Valley Tudo Challenge, which was crazy. It was like vintage you know, fights that were fought in rings in Brazil. Really? Oh, dude, terrible, yeah. terrible stuff. But, man, that was a good Friday night. Friday night, mm-hmm. we would always train. And at the end of training, everybody get cleaned up and stuff. Mm-hmm. Go take a shower next door at Gold's. Yep. Come back over. We'd have pizzas ordered. Yep. The TV. Remember that TV? That little TV. Can you TV? believe that was considered a business? <laughs> we had like a. It was like our clubhouse. Yeah, we we had chairs set around this like big wooden box. I still have that black wooden box in my warehouse. And like one side we had a TV, and you had like six guys sitting and around pizzas it, all around, eating it. pizzas and drinking sodas. That was a good. T- that Man, was that was guys' night. That was the best. Dude, and then was- I remember we um, we kind of started after we did that still, but every once in a while we go down to Jamie's basement. No, oh, dude, that was the best yeah. to watch the fights. Yeah. You remember, that's another thing people won't understand. This is more 90s now that we're moving yeah. into, though. But people won't understand how excited we got for a single UFC event. Mm-hmm. Because they only had maybe a couple a year. Yeah. So I remember. So you wouldn't miss it. Like, Everybody was going to be like there. like three to four a year. Uh, like three. The first couple of years, I think it was two a year. Mm-hmm. You know, they'd have one in the spring and one in the fall. And mm-hmm. then it got to be three a year and then yeah. four. And then you're like. Man, these things are getting regular. Yeah. Now it's every weekend. It's pretty much literally every weekend. I remember them talking that that's how it could go. Mm-hmm. And I was like, there's no way. And then Dana White came out, you know, to answer that kind of thing from the public. And he says, that's like saying that, you know, you can't have baseball on every night in the summer. He goes, it's a sport. Of course it will. So, all right, let's move back to the 80s. Back We're to moving, the 80s. Yeah, we kind of got off track. Yeah, just a little bit. Um, what what other music were you into uh, back then? I remember when I first started hearing um, heavy metal. Well, not heavy metal, but hard rock. Or hair bands. Yeah, I mean, hair bands, hard rock, and stuff like that. That changed me. Yeah, me too. I remember hearing... Um, a little rebellious, mm, you know. I remember hearing Metallica for the first time. And I remember hearing... Didn't like it when I first heard oh, it. Oh, I did. When I heard one. 
Yeah, it wasn't me. When I first heard that song, I was like, wow. Isn't that funny how, like, so many of my friends, even then, they connected mm-hmm. with it? Mm-hmm. You did. Yeah. I just don't, I still don't get that. Because I remember hearing that, and I would call local radio stations, like, we don't play that stuff. Really? And now it's like, it's just part of the culture now. Oh, yeah. Metallica. Yeah. Um, what about Motley Crue? Did you like them? I liked I liked Motley Crue. So, some of their stuff I liked. Yeah. Um, I didn't like them as a band. They always seemed... I hate to say it. They seemed evil to me. <laughs> well, evil. Let's go to Ozzy. Shout at the devil. I was like, uh, I'm not listening to these guys. I mean, I, I, Ozzy Osbourne's another guy I loved back in the day. He was eating heads off birds, but you know. Bats. Bats. <laughs> his voice, he, I love his voice. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how he can't talk though. It's like um, um, Bob Dylan. Oh yeah. Like I cannot understand a word you're saying, but I can hear you sing. Yeah. What, what's going on here? Yeah, I'm that way. Did you listen to Ozzy growing up? Was he I, in I your, did. Yeah. I did. Um, we got see Black Sabbath. Uh, I got I started listening when it was actually Ozzy. Uh, Black Sabbath was a little before that. Yeah, I remember Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath again. I remember thinking mm-hmm. that was, you know, the way I was raised, real conservative, and mm-hmm. anything that I considered evil, I was like, I don't know, man. This guy's eating head off bats, and <laughs> he's got pentagrams and blood dripping out of his mouth. I was just like, nope. And now I listen to it, I'm like, man, that he's so talented. Yeah. Um, another one that I didn't listen to a lot back then that I I dig a bunch of their songs is Pink Floyd. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were not mainstream though. I, I remember Pink Floyd. I didn't. I was never big into Pink Floyd. No, I mean, there's only a couple songs like "Wish You Were Here," "Comfortably Numb," "Learning to Fly," that kind of stuff. I'm actually looking up a, an artist now to see if they were actually in the. Uh, yes, they were. Okay, Pantera. I remember when Pantera come out. Yeah, that's not me. Either. I love me some Pantera. That hard stuff. I'm. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely into stuff that has you know. A different rhythm, mm-hmm. uh, catchy hooks, and I get I used to get grief about it. I was like, man, what is that stuff, man? That's bubble gum. And I was like, I don't care. I like it. <laughs> I'll tell you, he, we haven't talked about him, um, but he's kind of hard to pigeonhole. Prince, yeah. Uh, Purple Rain, yeah. That's one of my favorite songs of all time. I remember when that movie come out. Did you watch it? Oh yeah. I did too. I yeah. I remember thinking, I don't know if I like this movie, but man, I love this music. Yeah. But Morris Day in the Time, oh, love that. <laughs> that was so fun. <laughs> yeah. Do the bird, come yeah. on, Jerome, man. come over here, <laughs> Jerome. <laughs> but that whole um, end concert scene that mm-hmm. Prince did in that movie with yeah. "Let's Go Crazy," yeah. "I Would Die for You," mm-hmm. you had "When Doves Cry," R- and "Little Red Corvette," "Little Red Corvette," mm-hmm. all of those things. In party like it's nineteen ninety nine. And my second favorite thing outside of Purple Rain about Prince was Dave Chappelle. Oh, my goodness, yes. <laughs> One of the all-time greatest things ever. How about we play Skins and Blouses? <laughs> Charlie Murphy. Charlie Murphy. Real, uh, what was it called? Real? True Hollywood Stories. True Hollywood Stories, yes. That's that one awesome. of the funniest things I've ever seen in my whole life. Well, I, I'm just going to mention this one last group because I know you, you didn't like them either. Who? White Zombie. Actually, I did. Really? Yeah. Shannon got me into that, yeah. too. Um, he used to play um, that stuff during our training sessions. Uh-huh. And, man, that would get me fired up. So I remember uh, it was Pantera and White Zombie. They had a concert in Salem. I want to go so bad. Oh, no kidding. And that did not get to happen. Oh, no, it didn't happen. <laughs> now, my first concert. Mom was like, you ain't going to that devil I, music. <laughs> I, was, I knew I was going to get to go, and I did not get to go to it. It was Huey Lewis in the News. Oh, man. I wanted to see them so bad in Roanoke. If I could go back in time, because I didn't start going to concerts until I could drive at 16. Uh-huh. Then we started going. And by that time, I think Huey was kind of already, you know, done. Yeah. I would have loved that concert. Mm-hmm. Oh, Jacob's Ladder. Yeah. Walking on a thin line. Gosh, I, want a new drug, harder rock and roll. Oh, that makes this question. Did when you were, what kind of school did you go to? Christian school. Christian school. Private did they, Christian they, school. Did they let you play? I want a new drug. Dude, they didn't let us play anything, anything. Because we had a little little school dance. This was uh, late elementary, I think, when he was really big. Um, okay, mine might have um, been, been early high school. I'd have been early high school for me. And 
that's want song, a new hood they were drug. they were like no you can't that, no that's a drug song you can't play that song isn't that crazy because if like, you listen to the song yeah he's talking i don't want it i want love as my drug Ru yeah exactly it's like people are like no it's a, it's a drug song like it's totally not listen to the song we were kids we knew I, there was this football player he was a senior i think i was a freshman i mean so this guy was like i mean when you're a freshman seniors are like grown men yeah you know and this guy had brought a boom box in and it was after football practice and, you know, it was a Christian school, mm -hmm. um, but nobody was there except the football coaches and the football coaches were cooler yeah. than regular teachers. Yes. You know, they let a little stuff slide here and there for us. And that dude had that boom box and he turned that thing on and it was Michael Jackson beat it. Uh -huh. And that song is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and he had that thing cranked up and I could never forget being in our Christian school gym. Mm -hmm. Beat it. Do you remember when that that song come out the, the uh, video? That video? Cuz I remember awesome. MTV had a build up to that video. I remember that. Every I mean me, my mom, my brother, like six of my friends was in the house staring at the TV. 8 o'clock come around, there's the video. And that video was oh, awesome. Yeah. Eddie Van Halen and the guitar solo. Mhm. Mm yep. But when those guys got into that like little fight and yeah. the guitar started, so and then they, they all started, turned into a group dancing, dance it thing, like <laughs> it's so funny it's like how flat, like uh, it's a flash dance. Well, yeah, right, a flash mob, <laughs> flash mob. That's it, not flash yeah. dance. Which was a good movie, by the way. I love that movie, Irene Cara. Um, wow, I can't believe I remember that right off my head. What a feeling. That's good. I love that. And by the way, that's another great song for a movie too. Yeah, mm -hmm. all the eighties really. Um, focused heavily on uh the soundtrack back then yeah nowadays it's not like that i mean every now and again you will find a movie like that but it's it's rare i'll tell you what i liked recently that they did a little bit with that um the new star trek movie when they put the beastie boys sabotage yeah. in yeah dude that was mm -hmm. fantastic mm -hmm. that was my favorite part of the movie <laughs> now i will say this i like beastie boys back in the day for some reason that one song sabotage didn't really hit me very well i love that but you don't like that in the movie, I was like, this kicked it up a notch. Oh, dude. You, but you didn't like that song, Sabotage? No. I remember I, I we'll License like to Ill when that come out. I was at, at summer camp one year, and it was that year. And that seed, uh, that well, cassette was yeah. our music for that two weeks. I love the Beastie Boys. Mm -hmm. When I first heard them, they were just this novelty thing. Yeah. Because to me, they released the wrong song. You got to fight for your right to party. Yeah. Because it didn't come across like music. It came across like a gimmick. Yeah. To me, did. I was like, who are these clowns? Because they were playing so street. Yeah. You know, that I was like, this is like a comedy sketch mm -hmm. that has a pretty good riff. Yeah. And come to find out, that was like, okay, it was the wrong choice for me. Now, what song do you think it should have been? Paul Revere? Paul Revere, baby. <laughs> that was yes. awesome, wasn't it? Oh, here's a little story. <laughs> Brass monkey, uh, dude, that monkey, monkey, monkey. Yeah, dude, I love that. <laughs> I love that. I mean, that that's. I'm gonna I have mean, to update my playlist, man. I remember that two weeks. I was like, uh, I mean, we were this this whole camp basically was all into it. Man, it was such a great two weeks. You gotta love that. the The Beastie Boys. That was mm -hmm. fantastic mm -hmm. stuff. I, I I hate the fact that I know that we're forgetting. Oh, we're forgetting a ton of stuff. A, a I know ton. we are. But for our 80s music, man, we've done pretty good. Because mm -hmm. yeah. basically we come in, we didn't have really an idea of where it was going. We actually started thinking about movies first, and then it just morphed into songs. If you guys got more songs out there, let us know. Because hey, put them in the comments. Great, yeah, this is a great era for music. And I'd like to say this, man. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you. I noticed that, I mean, we have a lot of subscribers. Rolling but Stones, I forgot about them. Oh, yeah. I won't call them an 80s band, though. They're like a 60s band that just well, kept going. Yeah, well, I remember they had a lot of stuff in the 80s. Oh, yeah, they did. Um, well, the Duran, Duran Duran? Duran Duran, yes. Man, they were big. Was uh, the Traveling Wilburys, were they in the 80s or were they in the 90s? Do you remember them? Yes. That was like I, an old super group. Yep. Uh, you had Roy Orbison. Which I love Roy Orbison. I think that was the 90s. I love Tom Roy Petty. Orbison. I don't know his voice or something reason. I love that voice of his. His voice is good. Tom Petty, um, Bob Dylan, Bob Dylan, and somebody I know I'm forgetting. I can't remember either. Mm -hmm. Those yeah. are the big names that I remember. Mm -hmm. But uh, I also like. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> Bob Dylan's son was it Jacob Dylan? Mm -hmm. The Wallflowers. Yeah. 
Uh, one headlight. I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, like the movie Wallflowers was very good. Duran Duran. I remember they had a uh, movie or uh, one of their guys, Andy Taylor, mm-hmm. and he did a song that I really liked from a movie uh, with Mitch Gaylord and Janet Jones, American Anthem. Oh, yeah. And I remember Janet Jones just being this. I had such a crush on her. Mm-hmm. You know, and he had that song, Take It Easy. Yes, I remember that. That was a good one. Um, what is the... I'm trying to think. Vision Quest was another one. I don't want to what talk a, about Vision Quest, though. Gosh. we got to save that for the movie. I That's still, too good to... I'm just going to say one thing about that. I still am mad that one of my friends borrowed that, uh, that DVD, had it in his player for three weeks, never watched it. Was that PZ? No, that was uh, Dre. Dre. Dre Sadler. Hey. Like, Dre. Have you seen him? How's he doing? I haven't seen him for a little while. Dre, man. Get in touch with us. We miss you. Yeah. I'd love to have him back on the podcast. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on it. Yeah. It's, it's been way too long. Let's see. In excess. Oh, in excess. I love. Uh, okay. There, there's a, I, I'm just, I just typed in eighties music, but there's a group. I truly hate it. You hate it in excess. No, 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 no. I'm, like, I'm looking at the cure. Oh yeah. I did not like them at all, but in excess. Like in excess. You know, one of my favorite songs, um, from in excess is one that, I never heard in the general rotation. It was right around the time he died, called "Falling Down a Mountain," mm-hmm. and I think it might have been a remake or a remake of somebody else's song. I don't know if that was their original. That's a good song. That dude, you talk about stage presence, Michael Hutchinson. Mm-hmm. Devil Inside. That was that was so Holy good. Cow. Devil Inside. Slowly tear us apart. Mm-hmm. I mean, dude, love yeah, it. Okay, I feel a little sexist right now because there's a band I completely forgot about. What? The Go Go's, oh cuties. Was the Bangles? Was that eighties also? Because yeah, I, but I didn't like the Bangles. Oh, I love Susanna Hoffs. Oh, she's cute. She, I remember her in a movie. I was like, I will be here. The All Nighter or something like that. I don't remember what it was. But I just thought it was the greatest movie ever. Even what, it, was, it was a terrible movie. Oh right. But she was she was smoking hot. Belinda Carlisle with the Go Go's mm-hmm. Vacation. Love that. Vacation. Do uh, <laughs> you remember uh, Alex the Seal? No. Also known as Our Lips Are Sealed. Oh, for the right. longest time, Alex the Seal. I'm like, what does that even mean? Is that what you thought it said? Yes, <laughs> Alex the Seal. <laughs> the Eurythmics. Um, that was one that I wasn't real yeah, big on. Yeah, I, I like that one song there. Which one? The one that um, what's his face? Uh, Marilyn Manson covered later. Uh, I I know which one you're talking um, about. I can't think of it though. I remember wow. Sweet Dreams. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, the Talking Heads. Talking heads. There, there, there. I remember a little bit of this, but the next group, I don't know why. I forgot oh, the cars. That. I like the cars. Yes. That's, that that's was a really good group. One of my favorite summer songs was Magic. Yeah. Summer, was, summer, My summer. brother was going to um, buy that back on well, a 45, mm. and he got the cars, but it was the song, The Cars, not the group. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, do you like Flock of Seagulls? I don't know, but I can tell you do. I <laughs> did. Was that in the uh, the wedding singer? Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. When he was going up to, I thought that was like on that '70s show or something like that. Not a fan of the '70s show. <laughs> nah, small doses on that one. Uh, Simple Minds. Simple Minds. The B Fifty Twos. Didn't like them. It was funny too because to me that was the original hipster movement. Mm-hmm. The way that they dressed and you know, real tight suits and glasses with skinny feminine men I was like what are you doing dude okay now a group I did not like but I have since come to not dislike REM they started out in the 80s like doing the local college scene stuff and slowly got bigger and bigger he was one of the guys though that I started to Michael take Stipe. yeah I didn't like that he started becoming Hey, every time I'm on stage, let me throw my political yeah, agenda on yes. you. He, uh, that yeah, really made did. me go, you know what? I don't agree with your political agenda. So it's going to make me just think, hey, now you're like, you know, what? what's a teenager not want? Their parents shoving their opinion mm-hmm. down their throat. Well, I don't want anybody shoving their opinion down my throat. I was like, nope, I ain't listening to them. I did like End of the World, though. Mm-hmm. Who else? Go. Um, let's see. Where was I at? Um Dixie's Midnight Runners. I don't even. 
I don't even remember that one at all. I got I got to find their song dog on it. Cuz I can I can I can hear the song in my head. Come on Eileen. Oh, that's the name of the band? Yes. Dixie's Midnight Run. Come on, Cause, Eileen. Because in my head, oh. I'm like, I can hear the song playing. I love that song. That's a really good song. You know, you know when I hear that, what it reminds me of? What's that? Um, Eddie Grant, Electric Avenue. Oh, Electric Avenue, Eddie Grant. Love that song. That makes me think of New Edition, Candy Girl. <laughs> Candy Cap. I, I was not big on New Edition. But oh, the, I was. But oh, the, I the, so the was. The guys that come out of that group. Oh, wow, yeah. And Bobby Brown. Ralph Tresvant, mm -hmm. Bell Biv DeVoe. Bell Biv DeVoe. Uh, what was I, I, was I feel like those three got yeah. shafted. They're like, we, are, we can go they, solo. They you guys have to do a mini group. <laughs> their, their mini group was pretty good, though. It was good, but it's still, I don't know. Um, you too. Oh, gosh. How did I forget uh, Exactly. That? I mean, that's one of the biggest groups over the last 20 years, 30 years. Favorite song that they did was probably... Uh, where the streets have no name, mm -hmm. and that video. Remember, mm -hmm. they started playing on top of a building. Yeah, and, they and got everybody. Shut down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was awesome, though, mm -hmm. man. I tell you one, I love by them. Pride. Do you remember? Oh, I love that song too. In there. the name of. Uh, but love. do you remember when they come off that uh, DVD with BB uh, King? BB King, yes. When love come to town. I'll be honest. I didn't love get that. it. I didn't get like the thing. I knew that they were giving him props. Mm -hmm. But to me, I mean, this, you know, um, European, what is it? What were they, Irish, right? Uh, were they English, Irish? I want to say Irish. I think they're Irish. Saying. I liked Helter Skelter when okay, they did please, that. Please, everyone, if they're not, do not come and, and kill us. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> we, we, we may have offended an entire aisle. They're like, I'm out. What's the matter with it? It's not the, them. The police. Love the police. Mm -hmm. Roxanne. Mm -hmm. uh, every breath you take. Mm -hmm. Then yeah, that that video is a really good video. Yeah, and that the one where they had he had like all the candles uh, all over the place, and he was like running so. through them and stuff. I think so. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Wow, I I cannot remember a song by this group, but I remember the name Banana Rama. Oh, Cruel Summer from Karate ah. Kid. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. One of my favorite songs when I was a kid, Devo, Whip It Good. Oh yeah, I did not like that. Oh my gosh, you're wrong. Without well, their go. But Wait, it doesn't surprise me you Wait, would like it. <laughs> Wayne Chung. Oh, Everybody love that. Everybody Wayne Chung tonight. <laughs> they were, that was a fun party. That was a fun party song. Lover Everybody. Boy. Love Lover Boy. Man. man. Everybody's, isn't that the song? Everybody's watching to see what you can do. Yeah, could have been. I think, which, I mean, if you hear my voice, you know it's the same guy. It's the same thing. Man, my voice is brutally bad. Lover Boy was fantastic. Um... Are not REO Speedwagon. What is the other one? Not REM. Thirty Eight Special. Mm -hmm. Bad Company. Holy Water. I love that one. Uh, Dead or Alive. That the this band? group. No. Um, you take me right round, baby, right. Round. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> the like name of a them, record, or... baby. Wow. <laughs> like wow. Okay, one of the songs is You Spin Me Round. Another song is Turn Round and Count to Ten. So they're just re oh, spinning yeah, yeah. people. Dude, Loverboy, um, Everybody's Working for the Weekend. Yes. Yeah. That was that was great back in the You know, as I've gotten older, I appreciate that a lot more. Dude, I, there's so many songs. I can't believe that I don't remember all of their Let's songs. Really nice. Oh, Hall and Oats. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, I made some Hall and Oats back in the, in the day. There's the cars. Frankie Goes to Hollywood. I remember one song from them. Yeah, Relax. Don't do it. Hall and Oates, though, man, don't gloss over them. That was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Daryl Hall, and one of the John Oates, yeah, but Daryl Hall specifically, one mm -hmm. of the best voices of yeah. uh, music. Really period, voice. man. Well, you know, Oates there, he had quite the mustache. Oh, he definitely. <laughs> I was looking at the picture like that is a mustache and a half. I mean, Tom Selleck was like, "Hey, man, that's props." A nice <laughs> uh, Men without hats. Yeah, that's the one. Safety dance. Um, Culture Club. Who sang Land Down Chameleon. Under? Oh, dude, yes. Men at Work. Men at Work, yes. And I love that song. Yeah. That and Johnny B. Good. Mm -hmm. Be Good, Be Good. You ever see the movie, Johnny B. Good? Oh, yeah, with Michael Anthony Hall? Yeah. Hall? I don't know why. I was like, I really like this movie. 
Ah, you're in sports, right? Yeah. Well, there you go. That's pretty. That's pretty good, though. Oh, Love yeah. men at work. Have you ever heard that guy sing like you know acapella? I have not. That dude can sing just flat out. Get it, sing. He is incredible, man. Australian band. I mean, that's a, really about most of the groups from back in that era. Dude, we did. I mean, there's good. A, there's a few other ones that had some songs like. I don't remember some of these. I remember one, uh, Chicago. Oh, yeah. They had a lot of really good what stuff. was that, Chicago 16? Yeah. I think. And that... Had a ton of songs yeah. on that album, man. Gosh. It seemed like every one was going to be on uh, the top 10 request night. Yeah. <laughs> They're all love songs. Um, one of them was from Karate Kid. I am a man who will fight uh, for uh, your uh, honor. The glory of love. Yeah. I, I was I was at a further point in the song and I was like, you're, you're bringing me back, man. You're bringing me back. <laughs> the Pretenders. I don't remember them. Yes, I do, and I can't remember. Um, I'll stand song. by you. Back on the chain. Oh, I do remember back on the chain. Game. You don't remember? I'll stand by you. I don't. Go ahead, sing it. I'll stand by you. Still don't remember. Okay, I, I probably got that. All totally right, wrong. here's a group called the Outfield. Don't let nobody hurt you. Your love. They're not, they're, not, they're not my they're not my yeah. jam anyway Frankie goes to Hollywood I still can't believe that I forgot about them I tell you what though that was a fun song too man when that thing was really loud mm -hmm. that was fun Violent Femmes yep don't remember them yeah I remember, I remember the name I just don't remember really anything they did yeah Aerosmith but I thought they were like a little before that during and they after they were but I re that's a funny story I remember when Run DMC was doing Walk This Way. Uh huh. And then Steven Tyler kind of busted through the wall and started screaming the, the lyrics. And I was like, who is this dude busting in on Run DMC yeah. and why the disrespect? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, which one As a did, kid, I didn't know. Which one did you like better? Now, Aerosmith. Mm hmm. Back then, of course, and I still respect the Run DMC song. I mean, it was good, but now, when I first heard it, I I was like, I like the uh, the original better. Yeah, me and too. Then, and Aerosmith. Then I, then I, I Aerosmith made that song in the seventies. They redid it. Yeah, and then later on, I was like, I like the duo better. Then I went back and forth, oh, and, yeah. and now I'm, I'm I, I love the duo. I love it. You, you know what we have to take in? I mean, it's coming up on the Christmas season here mm -hmm. is uh, Christmas and Hollis. Oh, yes. Ah. The beginning of Die Hard. Uh, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Because I remember dun, that, dun, that was dun. my introduction to that song. <laughs> and I remember the video. You got Penn and it Teller was at the end of it. That's such a good song. Because they, they got their, stole their Christmas present. Love it. <laughs> uh, that's, man. I got to make me a playlist for tomorrow at work, man. Depeche Mode. I never liked them. I never liked I them. I never liked Depeche Mode. They were almost like pre-emo uh, type of group. Okay. I don't know how I forgot this song. Do you remember Tommy Two-Tone? One of the all-time great phone numbers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 8675309. Definitely. Jenny, Jenny. Oh, man. that. Oh, Phil Collins. Oh, my goodness. Dude, Phil Collins and oh wow, Genesis. Genesis. Yeah, I remember Phil Collins in the '80s. Billy, don't you lose my number. Mm -hmm. I love that one. This is a world we live in. Uh, There's Susu Studio, yeah. Invisible Touch. Mm -hmm. um, I love Invisible Touch. That was good. Mm -hmm. What was the other one? Um, in the air tonight. Yeah, dude. that was uh man. It was a <sighs> TV show dude. or a movie. I'm killing myself saying dude every punctuated dude. mark, dude. Dude. I but you know what? This is not a new revelation. Dude. I had a couple of guys I used to lift with <laughs> that were older than me and they were like, Hey man. Tears for fears. Dude, Everybody knock off wants to rule the world. There's Blondie's on here. I forgot about Blondie. Yeah. She was she, you know why? It is funny. There, She's that, forgettable? Well, the beginning eighties, like eighty to eighty two. Mm -hmm. If you were in that, man, everything was switching and you might have gotten thrown out with the bathwater. Baby with the bathwater. Damn. Wow, that's our, pretty much our '80s music, right there. That's a, that was a pretty good extensive list, yeah. man. I mean, you know what? What impresses me about it, I'm just going to be honest, is how much we remember before I start looking it up. Yeah, yeah. And well, it was an important part of our life. Yeah, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people on here that's going to say we missed stuff. Let us know what we missed because I know 
there's stuff that you're gonna somebody's gonna say and i'm like oh i gotta see that again yeah gotta hear that song again because it will take me right back to wherever i was I can't wait to see what my playlist is going to look like tomorrow. I'm going to have <laughs> Beastie Boys yeah. and Lover Boy, some Rat, <laughs> some White Zombies, Run some, DMC. Uh, oh gosh, I love. It. They're the kings of rock. There is none higher. Oh uh, dude, I'm, I'm sucking MCs. Be. will call me sire. Dude, I love it. I love that back. I'm going to send it to Christmas and Hollis tomorrow. Man, I love that song. Mariah Carey. I'm putting her on there. I still don't like that one. I'm sorry. I know I'm the bad guy here. I didn't like Mariah Carey back in the day. I did. I liked her. I, I like too. I like Paul Abdul. I mean, Love some Paul Abdul back Paul in the day. Paul Abdul, cutie. Turned out to be crazy. <laughs> you remember Rush? Rush oh, with Keanu. Yeah. How about that? I love that song back in the day. Wow, we're at an hour and forty minutes on this one. Really? I'm not joking. Wow, that flew. Well, I would like to apologize for being this long on this. But That's okay. We'll take you and uh, break it up, and you have to come back for the two-parter. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't think there's a, a break point in this because we were just consistent the whole time. No, oh, dude. I don't know. So, dude, you dude, know dude. what, people? If but you're um, still but listening, um, but um, but um. If, if you're still listening, thank you for listening to yeah, our dude. 80s uh, music. And again, sometimes we do 80s movies, and I will shut it down earlier than this. I promise. I honestly, I, I was in the flow and yeah. you weren't saying anything. I yeah. said, gosh, we got to be under an hour. Because <laughs> a lot of times I was looking up stuff and, and not thinking about it. That was good stuff. Man. Yeah. So, guys, anything else? Oh, no, I can't think. I, I know that when we go, mm -hmm. it'll be like on Messenger tomorrow morning, yeah. you'll say, you know what we forgot? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and I'm going to be You know, when PZ, when PZ uh, comes back um, what, what, next week or so, we will just go say, so we'll say, uh, let him tell us what 90s stuff to listen to. Okay, that's cool. Because that was his era. 90s music, man, that would be fun. There's some good stuff in there. That's when we went grunge. Yeah. Had the flannel wear, flag was yeah, flying. Yeah, so we had to wear plaid everywhere. Lord. <laughs> and and uh, holes in your jeans. Ain't it true? Mm -hmm. Ain't it true? But anything else? Hey, that's a great way to cut off the thing. Don't forget to like and subscribe mm -hmm. and comment. We love all three of those things. Exactly. And you guys have an incredible day. See ya.